Always gotta start with the good old clearing of the throat, and uh, hello boys, welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Trials and Tribulations, the final stream of the final game in the trilogy. Everything we have been doing has been building to this moment. It's been a couple of days since we've had a chance to play because, uh, I had company over the weekend. And so I, I got a little distracted, but I do recall where we left off. We've defeated the evil witch known as Dahlia Hawthorne, all right? We've cast her aside. Uh, Mia came back from the dead just to roast her into an absolute exorcism. It was all great. It was all fantastic. I was here for every minute of it. The only problem is that it didn't answer the question of who actually killed Mystic Misty Fay, a.k.a. Mystic Elise Donum, a.k.a. Maya Fey's mother. So we have a, a, a shocking mystery on our hands, and we're hoping that it's not Maya. So that's what I've got to tr try and prove in court today. And I know that a lot of you are excited for it because a lot of you are here today. So let me get my hellos in order. Uh, Pyro Demon Eye, Changeling DJ, Angel H, Cosmetology Corner, Between Heaven and Hell, Elysio, Zach, Jacob Welsh, TJ, Zamora, Deo, Communist, and Tom Leah. Uh, and Stephen, hello to all of you guys. I'm so happy to have you in the chat for this final adventure. Uh, <clears throat> do you think we're gonna solve the mystery today? Lord, I can only hope so. Being the best lawyer that I am, uh, I'm gonna stick with the very same strategy that has worked for me for almost every case, which is I'm going to wing it <laughs> and see if I figure out the answer in the middle of trial. You know, like a responsible attorney. Go into it not knowing an answer and see if one just kind of comes out over the course of, uh, arguing with the prosecution. <laughs> Maxwell Fong, hello, and welcome back. Uh, so sorry I missed the Mario Party stream. Want to join next time? Yeah, I'm sure there'll be more opportunities to do fun little streams like that. But <clears throat> we have a mission today. All right. <clears throat> so let's open it up, see what things we can get done. Um, have a bit of a shitty internet today, but I should still be here till the end. Before starting, what are your current thoughts and predictions about the case? Yeah, that's a wild card, right? So... Basically, why we're confused, if we'll wrap up before we actually start the trial. Dahlia Hawthorne's the evil spirit. She's been summoned, she thought she was being summoned by Pearl Fay because Pearl Fay was tricked by her mother, uh, Morgan Fay. Morgan Fay's like this evil bitch who really, really wants the power of the Fay clan. She wants to become the main family because she's actually a lowly branch family member because she was a little bit weak. She got the power stolen away from her by her sister, Misty Fay, because Misty Fay was a boss-ass bitch. Misty Faye, being the boss-ass bitch that she was, uh, had two daughters, Maya and Mia. Mia's been dead for a while, so she's kind of out of the picture, but Maya is very much alive, and she is set to inherit the uh, powers of the Faye clan and become the next uh, master of the Korean channeling technique. Morgan's very upset about that, so she wanted to use her daughter as a weapon of mass destruction. She also happens to be the mother of Dahlia Hawthorne and... Uh, Iris, who are actually twin sisters, not the same person. So it turns out that Dolly and Iris are actually Faze themselves, but both of them were pretty weak spiritually. So her mother was like, sayonara, not for me. Uh, and those children were actually abandoned, taken away with her father. Dahlia didn't really like Iris, so she convinced her dad to get rid of Iris and leave her at a temple. Turned out to actually work out pretty well for Iris, because Iris got raised in a loving family through the nature of Sister Bikini, whereas Dahlia really didn't get exposed to a lot of love and happiness. So she turned into a bitch very much like her mother. Uh, basically, where all of this leaves us now is that uh, Pearl is not the one who summoned uh, Dahlia Hawthorne. Maya did to hide from Dahlia because Dahlia wanted to murder more uh, to murder Maya, but not for the same reason that Morgan wanted to murder Maya. Dahlia wanted to murder Ma <laughs> Dahlia wanted to murder Maya because she wanted to get back at Mia because Mia put Dahlia in prison. And by doing that deed for Morgan to help Morgan become the master of the Korean channeling technique, Dahlia would have actually gotten her own self-interest accomplished by getting her revenge. It's a very, very convoluted, <laughs> very convoluted plot. The reason that it's an issue, though, is that um, the accusation is that perhaps Dahlia, when she was inhabiting the body of Maya, stabbed Mystic Misty and killed her, committing matricide, the sin of killing one's own mother. We don't want that to be the case. So we're going to try and will it into fruition that that is not the case. The only problem is that that doesn't leave us with a whole lot of suspects for who could have actually stabbed Mystic Misty when she was over on this isolated mountain uh, with uh, Mystic Maya. <laughs> 
So we're gonna have to get that all. Did you catch everything I said? Great. Let's uh, start. <laughs> Um, what do you remember from that Super Monkey Ball stream? Nothing. We don't talk about that Super Monkey Ball stream. <sighs> Alright. Here we are, team. Back in court. It's time to go. I, ho I hope you guys are ready for this. <clears throat> now then, before we proceed any further, I'm going to announce the results of the tests we had performed earlier. Oh, and I guess some tests are performed. Tests? Yes, tests on the bloody dagger that was found stuck in the pine tree. Oh yeah! <laughs> that. Forgot about that for a second. <laughs> Good to know that that- Okay, so we got a real murder weapon. That's the weapon that Maya Faye used when she fought the victim. So, what are the results? Was it the victim's blood, or... Due to time constraints, a full test wasn't possible. However, there's one thing we can say with certainty. The blood that was on this dagger was not the victim's blood. Well, that's... interesting. Uh... how does that work out? <laughs> Anyways, that is all. Now then, let's restart this trial. So, it wasn't Misty's blood on the dagger. Then, whose was it? Alright, dagger updated in the court record. Uh, found stuck in the pine tree in the inner temple garden. Blood doesn't match the victims. Hmm. Yes, I'm sure both the defense and the prosecution know this. But, this trial is rapidly coming to a close. Both sides will need to show some firm evidence with their claims. I understand, your honor. From what I've heard. The witness is dangerously weak, physically speaking. So let's finish this quickly. Yeah, don't worry, I'm on it. <laughs> Agreed. Very well. Please bring in the last witness. So, maybe our killer was stabbed? The, here's the reason that's a little bit confusing to me. Uh, the, the, the suspect list is narrowed because it can only be somebody who was on the other side of the bridge before the bridge, you know, went up in flames and you would have been stuck there. And to my knowledge, those people are Maya Faye, Pearl Faye, Mystic Misty, uh, and like, I think that's it, dude. <laughs> Witness, please tell us your name and profession. Maya Faye. My profession is, um... I'm the assistant manager at the Wright & Company Law Offices. Yeah, you are, girl! Don't you forget it. Maya. According to the magazine I have here, <clears throat> you're a spirit medium of the Korean channeling technique. I'm frightened. The Fae Clan. I don't want any more to do with it. Oh no, sweetie, no, that's your whole life. You love to stand under those waterfalls and freeze your buns off. Oh, Maya. Uh, the pain the Fae bloodline causes must be unbearable. Yeah, I mean, goddamn, you want to talk about family drama? The reality show that the Fae's could have if they lived in California. Unfortunately, they live in Japanifornia. Very well. Now then, Miss Faye, when the event occurred, you were in the garden of the inner temple. And you witnessed the moment of Miss Elise Donham's murder. Is this correct? Uh, James Core, hello, welcome to the chat. I, um, I, I didn't see any, oh. Straighten up this instant, young lady. Ah, oh, good. <laughs> He's being the real gentleman, is he, today? Huh? Pick your head up and speak clearly. There's always time for crying later. But, but I... Your mother was killed last night in front of your eyes. There's nothing you can do to change that fact. Wow, okay, just slap her in the face with it, why don't you? Oh god, Maya. Uh, George, unrelated to the case, but have you had a pomelo before? Ever heard of one? No, I don't quite know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, I'm very culturally unaware about most things. <laughs> um, 
Also, Dahlia Hawthorne was on the other side, but we solved that in the previous part of the trial. Right, but as a spirit, because she wasn't actually alive. But there's something you can do to fix this. You've been watching the whole thing, right? You've seen the witnesses come out, and you've seen us squeeze the truth out of them. Now it's your turn. Let's hear your testimony. On the night of the crime, what exactly did you see happen? Witness, if you please. Y yes, your honor. Oh, jeez. All right, Maya, I, I don't want to cross-examine you too tough, but I'm a little lost here, so I'm going to have to press everything. I hope you're aware of this. <laughs> right, um, I was passing through the garden on the way to a spare prep room when it happened. Suddenly, uh, someone struck me over the head. I stumbled, and ended up against the stone lantern. I think I screamed. Help me, Nick! <laughs> then something warm splashed over me. That's when I lost consciousness. Yeesh. Hmm, so you were struck on the head. I suppose it must have been this staff. Maya, the person who hit you. It was Dahlia Hawthorne, wasn't it? I'm sorry, Nick. I just... I couldn't see. I don't know who it was. Maya, think hard. I'm sorry, Nick. I really couldn't. Huh. Can't say it was an especially good night for young ladies to be walking around alone. Alright, dude, not the time. Can you, like, put a... <laughs> Can you put a cork in it, please? Yes, it seems it will be a hard to determine the criminal through testimony alone. Very well then, Mr. Wright. Please, begin your cross-examination. Hmm. Maya, are you hanging there, girl? She doesn't look very well at all. It's gonna be okay. Somehow, some way. You just... You hang tight. A pomelo is a citrus fruit with a solid inch of peel. It's like a grapefruit, but naturally sweeter and with its own flair. Unpeeled, it's the size of my face! Ooh. I'll have to Google one. <laughs> Godot's not having any coffee? Oh yeah, I guess maybe he uh, already reached his 17 cups for the day. It's been a long trial. Alright, let's start our pressing. Who else? <clears throat> oh, jeez. It wouldn't be one of my streams if you don't get a couple of voice cracks, am I right? <laughs> <clears throat> Frank, hello! Glad to have you here. I know that you're going to be hyped for this. <laughs> Who else was on the Inner Temple side that night? Well, Sister Bikini, of course. But I remember her saying that Iris would be coming later as well. On the day after the incident, Edgeworth met Bikini at Hazakira Temple. So that means she couldn't be the criminal. Right. So that the criminal is someone that couldn't have been on the other side past the bridge, because we're kind of building to this idea that they had to be trapped on the other side. So, like, I don't know, somebody... But there's not that many characters is the thing, so how could I be getting confused? So then, did Iris actually come later, like she said? Like, Sister Bikini's kind of the only... Her and Larry, but I think we saw Larry, too, after the bridge. Yeah, he was on the right side. Um, and Iris was on the right side, so... Well, um, uh, let me think. Uh, she seems confused. It's probably because she's so tired. No, I'm sure I didn't see her. Alright, so no seeing Iris. She must have come while I was preparing for the training. Right. Whoops. Meant to press that. Suddenly someone struck me over the head. Let's learn about that. Who did it? Who hit you? Uh, well, I, um, I didn't see who it was. I was hit from behind. Uh, you didn't see the person. But after that, your attacker was in front of you. Uh, how could you not see who it was? Oh, um, well, let me think for a second, I guess, maybe. I'm sorry, I just can't remember. Maya's really having a hard time. What should I do? Sorry, girl, I know you can take it, alright? It's because you're my bestie. <laughs> Come on, Maya. This isn't making sense. Why didn't you see this person? Um, well, let me think. It was, um... Oh yeah, that's right. 
Uh, it was dark. That's it. Oh, it was dark. It's not good to have too much light around when someone's undergoing spiritual training. Hmm. Come to think of it, there was earlier testimony to that effect as well. So, it was dark in the garden on the night of the crime. Which is why she didn't see her attacker. I thought maybe she was trying to hide something, but I guess not. Judging by the testimony thus far, the identity of the attacker was most likely the spirit that was channeled by Elise Donum, Dahlia Hawthorne. Hmm. Very well, please continue with your testimony. What happened after you were struck on the head? I stumbled and ended up against the stone lantern. Right. And what happened afterwards? My attacker was in front of me, blocking off my escape, I think. You think? After getting like that, I was in a state of panic. There were only two things rolling around in my mind at that time. Well now, this is beginning to get interesting. Right. So what were the two things rolling around in your mind? Um, my name is Maya Faye. One plus one equals two. <laughs> Charming, girl. Charming. All the all the essentials. Well, you see, for some crazy reason, uh, I was afraid I was going to lose my memory. I know it's odd considering my life was in danger, but that's how it was. Oh, because she was struck on the head. Okay. That's not odd at all. Your actions are understandable, given the circumstances. So, what did you do then? I think I screamed. Help me, Nick! <laughs> You think you screamed, but you're not sure. Well, listen, uh, I was a complete wreck. It was dark, and I couldn't see my attacker. Was it a man, a woman, an adult, a child? I had no idea. I was scared out of my wits. Believe me, my dear. I'm certain I would have soiled my robes. All right, Judge, thanks for the commentary. I thought this person might attack me, so I... I, uh... Anyway, I'm pretty sure I screamed. I thought it was my last hope. Wow, it sounds like poor little Maya was really out of her mind. I wonder what she meant by last hope. What should I do? Do I press her for more details? What did she scream? My last hope. Wait and see. Yeah, let's press my last... She said what she screamed. She said, help me. Who is she screaming help me to, I guess? Like, maybe there was another party there? Wait a minute, Maya. What's this My Last Hope stuff? Um, what? What do you mean by Last Hope? Uh, no, no. Uh, th th that's what you said. You said My Last Hope. I am now asking you about that. You, you, Maya, love of my life, I mean, bestie, y you can't flip the script on me like that, alright? What? I said what? Girl, don't you gaslight me now! Look, you were facing an attacker that you couldn't see, and you screamed, right? You screamed, help me. Well, yeah, I did. But you testified that you screamed that because you thought it was your last hope. Oh, well, you know, that's like, I don't know, what do you call it when that happens? Uh, she's not doing so well up there. Oh, yeah, um, I, oh, that's right. I remember now. I was facing my attacker, but that's not who I was screaming at. What did you just say? Yeah, that's right. Uh, it was the person behind my attacker I was yelling at. There it is. So let's put it into perspective. The attacker, Mystic Elise, she's the person who was channeling Dahlia Hawthorne. She gets stabby stabbed, she dies, she's Maya's mom, it's very sad. She's facing little Maya, and Maya's like, oh no, help me! Behind her is our mystery person, who might be our killer. Another body that we know was on, another living body that we know was on that side was Pearl Fay. I don't think Pearl Fay was a stabber. I, I, I don't think she would have been stabbing people. Uh, I think she had fallen asleep or whatever. She was trying to channel Dolly, it wasn't working. So, there's got to be someone else that was there. Mia, you've done a lot of things. I hope that you wouldn't have stabbed your mom, so I don't think it's you. Pearls... No, you're a main character, you can't be a killer. 
There's our prosecutor, Dick, Dicky, Dick, Dick, Dickinson. I. Uh, there's no way Dick is my murderer. No, he wasn't on the other side of the bridge. He was on our side. We met him up for the investigation. Sister Bikini, she seems to have a strong alibi because she was on the other side of the bridge. On our side of the bridge. You're dead as a doornail, so it wasn't you. Iris... I, I don't know how it would work. We've pretty well established that she was on the proper side of the bridge, too. And she was taken into custody because she was on our side of the bridge. Same thing with Larisse. Franny, you're unimportant right now. Same thing with Miles. Morgan Faye. <laughs> Unless maybe she like somehow escaped solitary confinement, but I, I presume that she is still very much in the prison. I... That's who I was screaming at to help. Ah! What is it now? I messed up. I, d I didn't mean to let that slip out. What? Huh? G why? Witness! Are you absolutely sure of what you're saying? Behind the attacker was another person? Um, I, well, uh, I meant to keep that part a secret. Um, uh, wh wait, what have I done? Huh. Takes a ton of pressure to make a diamond. That's what I always say. A ton of pressure. You're in a court of law here. You can't make things up or try to hide things in this chamber. Witness! The information you just presented is vital to the case. I want you to add it to your testimony. I could see a man behind my attacker uh, by the light of the stone lantern. A man? What? Hold it! Hold it. <laughs> a man? Who is this man? Well, you see... I couldn't see. You couldn't see. <laughs> Between heaven and hell. What the fuck, Maya? <laughs> uh, she's used this excuse twice now. Well, you know, lantern light, it isn't very bright, Nick. Oh, lantern light, did you say? There's a great big stone lantern in the garden. They always light it for when an acolyte is there for training. Huh. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, uh, you know what they say. Under the lantern, darkness reigns. So I could see the person uh, that was further away, but not my attacker, who was closer. Plus, there weren't any light sources in the garden at the time. Oh my god, James Corp. A man? Ooh. <laughs> Listen, our man is a murderer, all right? Let's not get our panties uh, dropped down to our ankles just yet. Hmm. Uh, then something warm splashed over me. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't mean... Was it... I didn't know at the time, but... I think it was probably blood, yeah. That that would make a lot of sense, because, you know... Dead body, right, Nick? <laughs> She's saying that's when Miss Donum, who was channeling Dahlia, was stabbed in the back. By the killer. At that moment, I was paralyzed with fear. I was just sitting there in the snow. I'm sure blood got on everything around me. That's when I lost consciousness. So, what happens next? I don't remember. How were you saved? You don't even remember that? No. I haven't got any idea! Um, I, I really don't know what happened at all. It's too bad. Worked side by side with Maya for two years now! Girl, you should trust me! I can tell when she's trying to hide something, by how she acts. She doesn't have a very good poker face, is what I am saying. And that's very convenient for me, because she lies quite a lot. And right now, I'm absolutely certain she's hiding something. Um, okay, so we, we have to present some kind of evidence. <laughs> that's what it, uh, it looks like we're here for. Um, so what are we gonna press? Someone struck me over the head, stumbled and ended up against the stone lantern. Screams help me. Could see a man by the light of the lantern. That's the statement that was added. There might be something suspicious there. Let's look at that lantern again. Um. Uh oh. Was not lit to the light of the crime. There it is. Objection! Objection! So, there was a man standing behind your attacker. Um, 
Yeah. That man. He's the killer. He stabbed her from behind. He's the one who killed Elise Donum. Otherwise known as... Misty Faye, your mother. The killer? Maya. You know who killed your mother, don't you? Um... What is the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? To be frank, Your Honor, I think she's in shock, and I think she's quite confused. That's why she hasn't noticed the huge problem with her testimony. Uh-huh, what do you mean? What problem? Maya, on the night of the crime, out of commission... Or, on the night of the crime, the lantern was out of commission. What? Yeah, girl, sorry to break it to you. It's true. There was no lights anywhere in the garden that night. No? Order! Order in the courts! Mr. Godot, explain this! In the pureness of milk to the perfect... Clear darkness of st uh, Add the pureness of milk to the perfect clear darkness of coffee. Stir. That's the state of the witness's mind right now. A cup of cafe a la... Yeah, words. <laughs> they exist. C cafe au lait! Is that even legal? Mr. Trait's words are the milk, and you are the spoon. Your Honor. I'm a spoon? I'm no spoony bard, I'll have you know! You must have noticed too, Trite. This witness's mental state is highly unstable right now. It's not hard to understand why she would make a little mistake like that. Sorry, but that's not gonna cut it. What'd you say? If there truly was- <clears throat> <laughs> These voice cracks. If there truly was no light in the garden, then there's a fatal contradiction in the witness's last bit of testimony. N Nick? May I? Recall the witness's statement about her attacker. She said that she didn't know if it was a man or a woman, an adult, or a child. And yet, the witness could describe the person that was standing behind her attacker. And she quite clearly described him as a man. Um, in other words, that would have to mean Maya actually saw our mystery person. You're a woman, you're a woman, you're a woman. One of these is not a woman. Godot wasn't at the first trial. He was quite literally MIA. Nobody knew where Godot was. You don't think anything of it because he was not even like really involved in the case. There's a stretch in logic here. There, there's some saying where somebody says, I think I've heard it for the first time on Jimmy Neutron. When you've eliminated all the possibilities, the only thing that could remain would be the impossible. I think we're ruling out any and all women. Sorry, Morgan. You're out of here. Um, We don't have a lot of men to work with. Dick and Larry were very well accounted for. Nobody's thinking about where Godot was. It's the re it's weird because um at, at the night of the crime we didn't have a case yet. So so this begs a lot of questions. Why would Godot be there? <laughs> Cuz we didn't have a case yet, he wouldn't have been a prosecutor. Why would he have been hanging out at Hazakura Temple? on a random night. <laughs> oh, just my random Tuesday, I'm gonna hang out in the woods. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess there's more that we would learn. <sighs> I, I don't have, like, the vote of confidence and be like, yes, it was Godot! But, like, my dude's looking mad sus right now, but he's the prosecutor! I, uh, I, uh, 
I, I have a lot of very conflicting feelings. His face mask lights up, right? Despite it being so dark that she couldn't see the face of her own attacker. <clears throat> Alicia, everybody asks, where is Gato? But nobody asks, how is Gato? Nobody cares. Order! What in the world does this mean, Mr. Wright? Are you saying Miss Face saw the real killer under pitch black conditions? Oh, 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 mm. hey, uh, I'm feeling very uncomfortable in this courtroom right now. That's <laughs> right. You have any idea what you're proposing? Oh my god. And we know he d he's not a big Dahlia fan, right? How could she have seen in the dark? There was no other light source at the scene. There are some things that you can only see in the dark, Mr. Godot. Maya, you did see who the killer was in the dark. And now, you're trying to cover for him. Because he, he kind of sort of saved her, but he also kind of killed her mom. Oh my god, oh my god, this is... This is gonna be a really, really tragic reveal if I'm right about what I think I'm thinking. And then there's the statue that had Maya's name written in blood that wasn't cleaned. But the area around the lantern was... Do we have a picture of that, by the way? It was shoveled, right? They, like, someone, someone shoveled all the snow around the lantern, but they didn't clean the lantern. And we know that Godot can't see the red on the lantern. Maybe I don't have a picture of this. No, okay. But, but, I, but I remember it. Uh... Cover? For the man that killed her mother? There's only one conclusion I can draw from this. You know who this man is. Please, Nick. I don't know anything. Please, I'm begging you. Ha. Huh. You talk a good game, Trite. Let's see if you can walk the walk. It was pitch black, so what could the witness see? I'm calling your bluff. No, Nick, don't. Please, stop. Maya's dead set on protecting this guy. The man who murdered Maya's long-lost mother. But I can't let him get away with it. I'm a lawyer. I'm an officer of the court, and I'm here to find the truth. All right, Mr. Wright. Time to show us what you've got. Who was this person that you say Miss Faye saw in the darkness? Oh my god, it's him. It's it's for sure. Because it was pitch black, Miss Faye was able to recognize the killer easily. I'm sure the court would like to see for itself how this is possible. Yes? What? But how do you propose to do with something like that? It's actually quite easy, Your Honor. We just need to recreate the conditions of that night. C conditions? Your Honor, the defense officially requests that all the lights in this courtroom be turned off. Oh, oh geez, wow, that was quick. <laughs> This is... but it can't be! Huh. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know why it's... It looked, I knew I was gonna see his face, I didn't know it was gonna look this spooky. That was a nice bit, a nice bit of deduction, Trite. Well, everyone... This is the man Maya saw the night of the murder! Oh my god, this game is so good! It's so tragic, though! Oh, fuck! Oh, there's no winners in this trial! Everybody's a loser! Order! Prosecutor Gato, what is the meaning of this? And I knew I didn't like him! Surely you must be shocked to hear yourself accused of such a thing? Why aren't you denying it? Ha. Huh. Your Honor, you're asking the wrong person. What do you mean by that? If you've got a question, ask the witness. It's one of my rules. Well, Maya, how about it? 
what you saw that night. Was it three glowing red lights? Well, witness, answer the question. You're wrong. I never saw that. Maya! I thought the person that said my mother was a man. But for a totally different reason. What?! Witness! Mr. Wright, what the- Stop your chattering, your honor. Ch chattering If it's worth asking, ask the witness. It's one of my rules. Oh, he is also still drinking coffee, by the way. Alright. Well then, let's continue with the testimony. Please, tell us how you knew the killer was a man. Um, okay, your honor. I didn't realize it until after I woke up, but... Oh, God, the conflicts this poor girl must be feeling. When I came to, I was just lying there on the training room floor. By the time I got back to the garden, the place had totally changed. The torches were lit, and the body was gone. And all the snow around the, snow lantern, uh, the stone lantern had been carefully cleaned up, too. Since the person did all that work alone, I just assumed it was a man, because it's 2001, and women can't do physical labor like that. That's just simply ridiculous. Only a man can do things. I'm just a woman. Hmm, yes, that makes sense to me. It was after the crime took place that the witness came to think the killer was a man. Uh-huh, that's right. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I... No, no, no need to apologize. It's as Mr. Godot said, you're utterly exhausted. It's only natural that you would be a little confused. Also, if you consider the situation you described, it doesn't seem too much of a stretch to assume the culprit was a man. Mr. Wright, proceed with your cross-examination. Alright, let's rip this girl apart. Um... Alright, press everything, see if we can find a hole. So you lost consciousness when you were in the garden, is that right? Yes, I think. I think it happened when the victim was stabbed. So then the person that carried you into the inner temple. Oh, it could only have been the killer. That's what I think too. So the killer carried Maya into the inner temple. By the time I got back to the garden, the place had totally changed. Naturally, the killer must have done it, right? Yeah, I think so. But why would the killer tamper with the crime scene like that? There must have been something the killer desperately wanted to hide. I, uh... I don't know. Looks like she doesn't have enough confidence. I think I need to gather some more information before I ask her again. Does, is that, like, the game alluding to that, like, I have to go back and repress that statement, maybe? Torches were lit and body was gone. <clears throat> the torches were lit. Uh-huh. That's how I noticed the whole scene had changed. I'm gonna say it was the killer who lit the torches. I mean, who else could it be? Hmm. Yes. The killer probably lit them since it'd be impossible to cover up work in the dark. However, if that's true. There's one thing that still bothers me. Why did the killer go to the effort of moving the body? That's true. It's hard to see. Oh god. Oh, it's hard to see these words when I feel like I have to sneeze. But it's not coming out. Oh. Oh. Shoot. <clears throat> That's true. It's hard to see how that would be of any advantage to the killer. The only one who would gain anything from that would be... The only person that was at the inner temple, Maya. Very well. Let me hear some more about the condition of the crime scene. Um, and all the snow around the snow stone lantern had been carefully cleaned up too. So, you're saying the killer cleaned up the snow. It did look really odd. Yeah, it was all shoveled. The snow was removed in an unnatural looking rectangular shape around the lantern. There were a lot of shovels around the inner temple. But they're all really heavy. Way too heavy for me to use, and probably any other woman that exists. Hmm, an odd fellow indeed, this killer. 
Why on earth would anyone want to take snow away? Well, there's one reason I can think of. Didn't you say a lot of the victim's blood sprayed onto the snow? Yeah. The area I collapsed in, it ended up being splattered. Oy. In other words, the killer's purpose was to hide bloody snow. I think that's the most reasonable explanation. Hmm, perhaps. However, there's something that's bothering me. The killer just wanted to hide the snow with blood on it. There was no need to remove that amount. Unless you can't see red on white. And why go to all the trouble of cleaning up all the snow if you're gonna leave the giant bloody stain all over the stone lantern? Oh my god, Godot, you poor son of a bitch. <laughs> he couldn't have scooped up just the snow that was stained with blood. Right. It looks like there are some mis mysteries behind this issue. But I think this will help explain them. All right. Just assumed it was a man, did you? So you're saying that you never saw the killer now, right? Yes. But earlier you very clearly stated that you saw a man behind your attacker. Nick, I'm sorry. The killer certainly went through a lot of trouble. Moving the body by pendulum, manipulating the crime scene? But for what purpose? Why do all of that? Maya must know more than she's letting on. When I came to, I was lying there on the training hall floor. Right. Oh, we're back at the beginning. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but let me try to press that other statement that um, I think I was maybe hinted at pressing twice. This one, maybe? I think it was. Killer must have done it. I think so. There must have been something the killer wanted to hide. Uh, the truth is, when I saw the crime scene, I felt something. You did? Oh, man, I did pick up on that hint. This was when we were supposed to go back and press again. Uh-huh. I felt like the killer was hiding the evidence for me. For my sake. What? Hiding it for you? Well, everyone knew I was at the, the only one at the Inner Temple that night. And I tend to get accused of murdering my family members about, like, once a year. So it's kind of normal. And, you know, I, I saw that that was probably the trajectory that this case was going to go. So it's not that much of a stretch. If Sister Bikini had come back and looked at the garden... She probably would have thought that you had done it. Oh, she definitely would have thought so. And you're saying that's why the killer cleans up the crime scene to make it look like nothing had happened. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Mm. Well, that's certainly an important piece of information. I want you to add that to your testimony. Yes, Your Honor. Alright. I think it was for my sake that the killer cleans up the evidence he had. Alright, well, we've got a big old gaping hole in here. Where's that stone lantern? So why did he leave your name on the stone lantern? The body of Elise Donum was carried all the way to the Hazakura Temple's courtyard. Then, at the garden, the real scene of the crime, the snow that we suspect was covered in blood was scooped up and removed. It's reasonable to believe all this was done in an attempt to hide the true crime scene. However, there's still one matter that seems somewhat odd. Oh, and what would that be? You must have figured it out by now, Mr. Godot. It's the message written in blood on the lantern. <laughs> it was written very clearly on the white stone lantern. Maya. Um... If the killer was so motivated to protect Maya from suspicion, then why didn't they wipe the writing off of the lantern? Ah, oh, you're right! <clears throat> because he couldn't see it. Oh, but, Mr. Wright, isn't it a fact that the killer was trying to cover up the crime scene? Indeed it is, but it doesn't make much sense to move the body and remove the bloody snow and then not wipe off the most incriminating thing of all, the bloody writing. <clears throat> but if that's the case... Do you have any explanation for the killer's mysterious behavior? Why would this killer move the body and remove all that snow, but then leave the bloody writing on the lantern? Well, I think it should be pretty obvious to the court by this point. It's a fact that the killer left the writing on the lantern. There must be a reason for it. Well then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your opinion. 
Why did the killer leave the message written in blood on the lantern? The killer didn't notice it. <laughs> we got that bop going. Prosecutor Godot! Earlier in this trial, you gave me some good advice. Please don't make fun of me for my cracking voice. Once you eliminate the impossible- Oh my god, it was Godot who said it. I do also think I heard this on Jimmy Neutron, though, too. <laughs> Whatever remains must be the truth. Maybe you're not as dumb as I thought. The real killer wanted to disguise the fact that a crime had occurred here. If that's the case, they wouldn't have left the bloody writing on the stone lantern on purpose. Therefore, it must mean that they didn't notice it. But that doesn't make any sense. Uh, the torches were all lit and everything. Uh, there's no way a normal person would miss something as glaring as that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah you're, you're pretty much right, Maya. There is no way that any normal person would. But what about this disabled Cretan across from me? <laughs> God damn it, Phoenix, let's not go there. What? What are you trying to say, Mr. Wright? There's only one person involved in this incident who could have missed seeing the bloody writing altogether. Oh, and who would that be? Uh, that line of the impossibles from Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, so for sure, as someone who grew up as a small child watching Nickelodeon, I definitely had seen an episode of Jimmy Neutron where I think they were playing Sherlock Holmes, and they said that line. I don't know why I'm so hellbent on this Jimmy Neutron thing. It, you, have, I've learned certain things from children's TV shows. I learned that the tip of a shoelace is called an aglet from the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Uh, I learned that to rue the day... Uh, is a term that means regret the actions that you have done from iCarly. <laughs> you, you just have weird bits and pieces of knowledge that I've picked up from television. That's what we call an American education. Um, who's the person that could have failed to notice the bloody right? Oh wow, we're throwing him again, are we? Here you go. Mr. Godot, this is what you said yesterday. My eyesight is pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see everything. Ah, oh, you can't see everything. Is that correct, Mr. Godot? This lantern was submitted as evidence today. I would like the court to think back to the moment it was first presented. This lantern! Something written on it! What? It's written in blood! Huh, <laughs> nonsense. This lantern... It's as clean as a whistle. Well, someone is not a very good murderer. Mr. Godot, just admit it. There are certain colors you can't see, correct? You can't see red on a white background, can you? That's right. We went through this once before. During the poisoning case at Cherry BN. This is the apron the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. It somehow spilled coffee on... Oh, there's something still bothering me, Mr. Godot. Why have you not explained the bloodstain to the court? Bloodstain? What bloodstain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor! The blood-colored stain that's smeared all over the apron! Ridiculous. No one told me anything about a bloodstain. Eee. You could see the coffee on the white apron, but you couldn't see the ketchup, because it was red. Ha. Huh. Strange. In a black and white photo, those letters would have appeared black to me. I wonder why I'm the only one that can't see them. Mr. Godot! Are you admitting it? Are you admitting that you can't see the red writing, the red writing on the lantern? Hey Gramps, didn't you know? That's the reason why I don't drink red tea. Fascinating. Frankie, did you hear that? He can't see red on a white background. I got it, babe. I'm right here, babe. <laughs> I wasn't sure about it until now, but I just can't believe it. Prosecutor Godot is the murderer. There's no going back now. I finally figured out the truth. All right, boys. Let's drop this truth bomb on him. Mr. Godot, the defense at this time formally accuses you. You are the murderer of Miss Elise Donum. Also known as Misty Fay. It's hard to believe this may be true, however. Once again, Mr. Wright has brought up a disquieting, a disquieting fact about you. <laughs> huh. Just make sure you don't fill out the indictment in red ink, Gramps. Come on, how does a little graffiti make me into a killer? 
Besides, it's not like it's my name that's written there. I'm certain the killer wasn't able to see the color red. This is rich to go on, right? The answer's right there at the crime scene. In the snow. The snow? How so? Well, for example, why did the killer move all that snow? Your Honor, you said it yourself. If he wanted to hide the bloody snow, why not just take out that area? Ah, oh, yes. Why didn't he just take out that area? Ah! Oh, wait! Could it be? Precisely, Your Honor. The killer couldn't see the red blood that had seeped into the snow. And also, and so, he had to remove all of the snow. He couldn't be sure of where the blood had landed, so he removed the whole area. Objection. Isn't it more likely that the killer couldn't see the blood because it was dark? Not a chance. The torches were all lit. He would have been able to see just fine. Hmm. It seems that once again this trial has taken an unexpected turn, to say the least. Can you explain this, Mr. Kazoo? Whoa, 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 what just happened? Oh, God. Wait! Wait just a minute! Maya! What is it, witness? Mr. Godot isn't the killer. After all, uh, he didn't even come to the Inner Temple until two days after the murder took place. He didn't show up until after that old bridge got fixed up. Maya. You can't testify to something like that. What? What do you mean? I may not look it, but- Ah! Uh! After the murder happened, you didn't even exist. She didn't. Oh, I'm afraid I don't follow- Well, she was channeling someone. Are you senile, old man? We established this just a little while ago. After the murder, this witness was unconscious for a long time. Because she was channeling Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, that's right. P please, Your Honor, uh, let me add this to my testimony. Nick, come on, listen to me. Maya. Do you plan to cover for Godot no matter what the cost? If that's the case, uh, I've got no choice. Your Honor, let's hear her testimony. If it means we're going to hear the whole truth, I say we should not silence her. Ha, huh, nicely done, Shrite. Very well, let's hear the witness's testimony. Please, tell us what happened at the Inner Temple after the murder. Yes, sir. Uh, after I woke up, I began channeling, and my spirit left me, as it were. But little Pearly was there at the Inner Temple, too. Oh, interesting. Pearly was also stuck on the Inner Temple side that night. The next morning, she looked around but couldn't find anyone. The next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, uh, she was in the spare prep room. That's when Mr. Godot arrived at the Inner Temple for the first time. He found Pearly first and cheered her right up. Who is this Pearly? It's my little cousin, Pearl Fay. Hmm, so when did you hear about this? Oh, just a while ago, when I was in the medical office. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. But what you heard from someone else is simply not admissible as testimony. What? Come on! Pearly would never tell a lie. She's a way more honest person than I'll ever be. <laughs> Facts. Real smart, Maya. You always know the best things to say when you're under oath. Ha. Huh. The prosecution has no objection. We believe the witness. Oh, yeah, convenient for you to say. Mr. Godot! Let's just move on to the cross-examination. If the defense has no objection. This is highly unusual, but... Mr. Wright? Let's get this cross-examination started. After the incident... God, this is such a weird, uh, weird turn of events that I did not expect. Alright, she was also stuck on the Inner Temple side that night. Let's press that. So, where did you think Pearl slept that night? In the spare prep room next to the training hall, I guess. There's a rule that you can't enter the training hall during an acolyte's training. Uh, but even so, why did she go to the Inner Temple in the first place? Seems that Pearls became very worried about Maya. Uh, she knew that the spiritual training I was about to undergo was very intense. Pearls was supposed to channel Dahlia Hawthorne, but she couldn't do it. That's why she headed to the Inner Temple. 
However, Dahlia Hawthorne was already there, possessing the body of Elise Donum. The next morning, uh, she looked around, but couldn't find anyone. She searched the entire in inner temple side, end to end. Well, you see, Pearly gets pretty scared when she's alone, and there weren't that many places to look. Uh, she says that she even went back and forth several times. Hmm. The inner temple side has two structures, the training hall and the spare prep room. And there's also a storage shack, I think. That's about it. There's a storage shack, too. Pearls was looking for other people, right? Would she have really examined a storage shack all that carefully? Well, if it was me, that would be the first place I investigate. Hmm. So that means it's possible that someone may have been hiding in the storage shack. Next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, uh, she was in the spare prep room. Pearls didn't hear the sound of them working on the bridge. What do you mean? I was just wondering why she would stay in the prep room. If it was me, I'd at least go out and wait at the foot of the bridge. Oh, well, Pearly said she was sleeping at the time. She said she was so, so scared during the night that she couldn't sleep well and woke up a bunch of times. Aw, oh, poor little girl, all alone like that. Well, we know she had at least one friend in the sacred cavern. Dahlia Hawthorne, who was busy battling with the trick lock. She couldn't let anyone see her, so she wouldn't have shown herself to Pearls. What happened after the bridge was finally fixed? Uh, that's when Mr. Godot arrived at the Inner Temple. Hmm. So it was your first time on the Inner Temple side, Mr. Godot. Hmm. That's funny. Am I imagining things, or did the defense just ask me a question? Mr. Wright, please save your questions for the witness. What you heard from someone else is simply not admissible as testimony, Your Honor. <laughs> They're literally your words. Touché, Mr. Wright. Oh well. What do you have to say, Mr. Katar? Hot nights and even hotter coffee. That's what I always say. If I hadn't been for if it hadn't been for this case, I never would have visited there. The freezing cold temple in the mountains. I think I'll pass. Yeah, that's the part we gotta prove. Why was he there? <laughs> So, he had never visited Hazakura Temple, or the Inner Temple, huh? Huh. <laughs> you wanna say something, Trite? In any case, I have to find a crack in Godot's armor. While I cross-examine Maya, that is. Very well, please go on with your testimony. After fixing the bridge, the policemen came over to the Inner Temple side, right? Yes, uh, then Mr. Godot... He found Pearly first and cheered her right up. He cheered her up. That's what Pearly said. Uh, she said she w he was a very nice older gentleman. Thank you for looking after my cousin, Mr. Cadell. Oh, dear I was, thinking you were nothing more than a coffee addict. Huh. Cut it out. You're making me blush. This guy's really beginning to get on my nerves. In more ways than one, actually. The truth is, there aren't that many places to look on the Inner Temple side. The policemen were all busy going over the garden with their fine tooth combs. So I decided to carry out an investigation in my own Godot style way. Oh, I'm the same way. I like to hand down my verdicts in my own way. Judge style. Hmm. Maybe I should ask some questions. Phoenix style. Forget it, cheering up pearls or his investigation. Um. Let's talk about. I don't know, let's go for both. <laughs> So you cheered Pearls up. When I found that little girl, the first thing she asked about was her cousin Maya Fey. Really? The bridge had burned down and she was huddled up in that tiny shack with no heat. Even though she must have had a truly terrifying night out there, she asked about you before she said a thing about herself. Pearly? I noticed that you weren't anywhere on the inner temple side, but I couldn't find it in me to tell her that. So I gave her my last cup. Of coffee? With milk and sugar to hide the bitterness of the harsh truth. Oh, that's nice. Ah, oh, what a sweet story. He had a thermo of coffee. Why well, doesn't that surprise me? There's only one thing of any importance here. Where was Godot when the murder was taking place? He must have already been at the Inner Temple when it happened. Otherwise, he couldn't have killed Elise Donum. Alright, let's go back to that and ask the other question. 
shoot her up. Yeah, 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 ba, 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 ba. Touching story. Every copy addict. Yeah, yeah, yep. Okay, great, great. Yep, please. Did it just on style. Maybe I should ask. Godot's investigation. You said that you conducted an investigation of your own. Did you find anything? Looks like my investigation went about as well as yours, Trite. After all, I did miss the bloody writing on the lantern. Well, I didn't miss it, so speak for yourself, goggles. <laughs> oh, jeez. The only thing I did discover was the beauty in the training hall. Beauty? Misty Fay, naturally. Clad in her sunny Japanese garb, surrounded by the hue and aroma of Western tastes. Western t What? Can you find a stranger way to describe gravy? So, from there, you headed to the prep room. Wait a second. Whoa, whoa, ba back it up. Roll it back. What did he just say? I think I just found his proverbial weak spot. There's only one thing of any importance here. Where was Godot when the murder was taking place? He had to have already been at the inner temple when it happened. Otherwise, I couldn't have killed Elise. Hmm. Hi. Next morning, she looked around but couldn't find anyone. Spare prep room. For the first time. Alright, so my question I was going to say is, how did he see Misty Faye's image? Because it should have been covered up by the gravy. But then Phoenix talks about the gravy. I don't know if I'm wrong about this. Let's throw it and see what happens. No, I did get it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, she was uh, not visible. Mr. Godot, the first time you crossed Dusky Bridge and went into the Inner Temple was long before the murder took place. Wh why do you say that? Because he just made one fatal slip-up. The hanging scroll in the training hall. Oh, the hanging scroll. But, but, Mr. Godot's right. That scroll shows a picture of my mom. Maya... I know you know who it is, but here's something you didn't know. By the time the bridge had been repaired, two days after the murder, the hanging scroll in the train hall looked like this. I'm sorry, girl. <laughs> I don't want to show you your dead mother being defiled on a poster. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's a wonderfully delicious smell. Is it? That's gotta be days old. That's gotta be like, eh, not so great anymore. The morning after the crime, someone covered it with gravy. Gravy? But why gravy, Nick? Well, because gravy was much more than a condiment to the culprit. Well, Mr. Godot, if you really hadn't seen the hanging scroll until after the murder, you wouldn't have had any way of knowing that it was Misty Fay. Wait a minute, Nick. Yes? We'll take another look at the scroll. Roll the rest of the clip! Damn it, I know where she's going with this. The, the woman is covered, but not the, uh, not the symbol. Look at the top. And there's a crest there. Ah, that. It's the mark of the master, correct? Exactly. So, if you know the meaning of the mark... Ah, oh, then you could guess that it was a picture of Missy Fay on there. True. But Mr. Godot described what was underneath like this. Clad in her stunning Japanese garb, surrounded by the hue and aroma of Western tastes. Yeah, being a pretentious ass is the thing that's gonna get you, uh, screwed up here in court, buddy. Maybe you should keep your answers short and concise, which is what they recommend, actually. If you're being questioned in an interrogation, you are supposed to just be as concise as possible. And, like, ideally, if you can just be yes or no. When you start throwing in unnecessary details, like this nonsense, uh, that's when you are more likely to trap yourself. <laughs> oh. Yes, it's possible that he knew what the crest meant. However, he couldn't have known that she was wearing Japanese clothing. Mr. Gateau, on the day of the murder, you were hiding at the inner temple long before the crime took place. But why? Had he found out about the plan? Can I ask you one thing, Trite? What is it? So a theory of yours, it all rests on a certain assumption. That I knew beforehand that a crime was going to be committed. Yeah, that's what's weird. Yeah, that's right. Otherwise, there's no reason for him to sneak onto the crime scene. Of course Mr. Godot knew about the plan. What? What did you say? Is it really possible that another person knew of the plan? Oh! Where's my letter? 
Opens once before. Orders from Morgan Fay. How did Godot get a hold of this, though? I, I have questions. I hope they'll be answered. At length. This crime was actually planned over a year ago. Morgan Fay authored a plan for her daughter's future. And these instructions were hidden somewhere in Fay Manor for over a year. However, by the time Little Pearls found these instructions, they had already been unsealed. Unsealed? Yes. The killer had read these instructions long before Pearls ever found them. That's how he knew the crime was to take place at the Inner Temple. Why wouldn't he have just burned the note so Pearls had never seen it? Ugh! And you still insist this crafty killer is me? Oh, you bet I do. But you just said that the instructions were hidden. That's right! Uh, Mr. Godot couldn't have known where the instructions were hidden. If he really wanted to know, he had one great chance to find out. Ah, oh, when was that? During a visit. A visit? Morgan Faye told her daughter Pearl about where the instructions were hidden. During one of her visits to the detention center. That would be the only time for someone to have learned where they were hidden. Eavesdropping? On a visit to the detention center? It could be arranged if you were someone with easy access in and out of there, which he was because he was Diego Armando. Like, for example, a prosecutor such as Mr. Godot. Oh, no. Order! Mr. Godot! You're under fire again. This murder could not have been carried out without prior knowledge. And you... You were the only one that could have acquired this information before the murder. My god, my dude wasn't thinking at all. What if it was pearls? You would have stabbed a little child to death. Humans are afraid of the dark, and yet, at the same time, we're fascinated and bewitched by it. Maybe that's why humans drink the darkness that is coffee. Um, sorry for always asking, but what are you talking about? It means there's a reason for everything. According to your theory, the killer in this case eavesdropped. On a conversation during a jail visit where he learned of a hidden plan for a crime. After discovering the plans, he hid in the inner temple and waited for the crime to occur. Then he ultimately took a person's life. And he did all of that just to protect this witness? Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm saying. If you're accusing me of this crime, I have to ask you, why would I do this? This girl is nothing but a stranger to me. I've got no reason to go through that kind of trouble to protect her. Alright. Really, dude? I am what you see. I'm certainly not the type to rescue the damsel in distress. Ah, oh, killer's behavior is certainly extreme, for lack of a better word. Even considering that the killer wants to protect this witness's life. His behavior is still a little too unnatural. However, you had a good reason, didn't you, Mr. Godot? An unshakable reason that forced you to protect this witness at all costs. I knew it. You figured it out, haven't you, Nick? Yeah. Maya. I guess you were doing your best to cover for Godot. For the same reason, huh? He was in a relationship with Mia. Okay, Troid, I'm all ears. Let's hear it. It's actually very simple, Godot. Maya Faye is a lot more than just a stranger to you. What's this? There's one person who lies at the very center of this whole story. One person that ties you and Maya Faye together inextricably. Her name is Mia, and she's dead. There's a very good reason why Maya Faye's life is so precious to you. After all, she is Mia Faye's only sister. Mia Faye. You once worked alongside her. That's when you were a defense attorney. Wait, wait a second here. Mr. Godot is a defense attorney? With your honor's piercing intellect, you must have figured it out by now. <laughs> the real name of this man who calls himself Godot. His real name is Diego Armando. What? Oh my god, that is brand new information. <laughs> Isn't that right? The last time someone called me by that name was over six years ago. Oh, Diego Armando. That name rings a bell. 
It should, Your Honor. All of this is related to a single case. A case in which a convict named Terry Falls killed himself. Mia Fey's first time in court. The tragic outcome left a deep wound in her heart. She knew that behind it all was a heartless, scheming demoness in disguise. But in the end, Mia couldn't tear off that disguise. However, there was one man who reached out to help her. Diego Armando, a senior defense attorney at the office where Mia worked. It's my fault. It's my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself. Mia, can't cry yet. Oh, jeez. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. I was moved by her. The way she put all her faith in her clients. That pure sweetheart of hers. That's why I could never forgive Dahlia Hawthorne. <clears throat> Mia, and I Mia and I thoroughly investigated that fake kidnapping incident. Then what a fateful day. Dahlia wanted to meet with me. It had been six months since the trial. We met in the courthouse cafeteria. Oh, I just remembered. Six years ago, right here in this courthouse. You were poisoned. Even I didn't see it coming. Dahlia Hawthorne slipped some poison into my coffee. Some newspapers at the time called it a murder. Right, all right, I knew I wasn't delusional for thinking that he was murdered. But very little information about the case was released to the press. But you weren't dead at all. No official reports ever actually called it a murder. I was just in a deep, deep coma. I see. My body shut down and my life became nothing but a long, deep sleep. That woman's poison did a real number on my central nervous system. I lost my sight, and all my hair turned white due to the damage it caused. That's terrible! Apparently it was a miracle that I ever regained consciousness. Five years had passed since I drank that poison brew. Then one morning, my eyes flew open from the smell of a doctor's cup of coffee. And he was like, well, this is gonna be my life now. <laughs> five years? You were asleep for five years. So he quite literally came back from hell. And the worst possible news was waiting for me. Mia's gone. Oh. Mia Fey was dead. From the very moment I opened my eyes, I had already lost everything I thought I had. The woman I loved had been murdered, and the woman I loathed had been sentenced to death. The woman you loathed? The woman who had spiked my scalding hot coffee, Dahlia Hawthorne. Ha. <laughs> Good old Mia. She didn't let me down. She got her revenge before she checked out. In the end, there wasn't anyone waiting for me when I woke up. That's so sad. For someone like me, for someone who had slept away their best days, there were only two reasons left to live. And it was for those two reasons that I decided to become a prosecutor. And if I may ask, what were your two reasons to live? First was you, Trite. Me? If I hadn't drank that stupid poison, Mia Fey never would have died, much less the way she did. You were the only one who was there to protect her, but you let her die. It was all your fault. Okay, well, you killed her mom, so... It wasn't like that. I wanted to see for myself what kind of a man you really were. So that's why you became a prosecutor. My other reason for living? She goes by the name of Maya Fey. You mean me? You were the only way I could make up for the sin of not saving Mia. One year ago, when the Korean Village incident was resolved, it was obvious that Morgan Fay was planning something. Whatever her evil plan was, I was determined to stop it. My role as prosecutor put me in the perfect position to do something about her. That's how you overheard Pearls' visit with Morgan at the detention center. I knew that time was drawing near. Since I knew the plan, I thought I could foil it. Max, love this song. Oh my god, it is. Everything from Phoenix Wright is a bop and a half. My goal was to outwit the plan. I thought if I could do that, I could keep that girl from being caught up in it. That makes sense. 
Pearls had known that the actual purpose of the plan was to kill Maya. She never would have helped out. Finally, the day of the plan was drawing near. Contacted both my accomplices. Accomplices? Iris of Hazakira Temple and Misty Fey. It was a trio. They were all in on it. So then how did this plan go so wrong? You had three seemingly pretty intelligent people that are all like, all right, we got to do something to protect the Fey clan. And, and she died. I especially needed the help of Iris. She was to take the fall in my backup plan in case we couldn't control Pearl Grey. But, how did you contact my mother? She's been missing for almost 20 years. Officially, yes. What? What do you mean, officially? You've heard about it, haven't you? About the strong ties between the main family and the government? Now that you mention it, Bikini did say something to that effect. She said that the Master of Crane had great authority. Even without her official position, Misty Face still wielded great influence. The police have been keeping an eye on her movements all this time. That's how I was able to contact her. Again, because of my position as a prosecutor. So, my mom was cooperating with you. Don't ever forget. No matter how far away from you she was, she never stopped thinking about you. She was always... That's why I knew she would do anything to protect you. If you want to know how strong her resolve to protect you was, look at her staff. Her staff? The one with the sword in it? The day the plan was to be carried out arrived soon enough. We met for the first time at Hazakira Temple. That's when your mother showed me her special staff. I realized it then, just how far she was willing to go. She was ready to use that sword to protect you from Morgan Fay, if necessary. Aww. When your mom would kill her sister for you. Yes, even if it meant paying the ultimate price. Mom. That night, the night of the crime, there was just one way to stop Morgan's evil plan. You mean pearls, don't you? We had to make sure she didn't channel Dahlia Hawthorne. Well, Pearl, what are you going to do tonight? Well, um, if you'd like, you can come to my room. Perhaps we can read some books together. We thought we could prevent her from playing her part in Morgan's plan, but she didn't show up. She was worried and followed me to the inner temple. And that's exactly what we were most afraid of. So that's why Misty Fay had to do the channeling herself. She channeled Dahlia Hawthorne into her own body. What? What do you mean? If she channeled the spirit first, then Pearls wouldn't be able to do it herself. As Master of Corrine, Misty Fay's power was supreme. So that's how it went down. She channeled Dahlia Hawthorne so that Pearl Fay wouldn't be able to. But if both you and Iris had this, like, backup plan, why not just, like, detain her somewhere? Why didn't you guys lock her into the Sacred Cavern? Is this true? My role in the plan was to make sure no one was gonna hurt Maya Faye. Okay, so, so you dropped the ball, is what I'm getting from this. That's why I hid myself at the Inner Temple. It's just in case you needed to be saved from Dahlia Hawthorne. Godot! Anyway, that's all I'm gonna admit to. Trite. Huh? There's no doubt about it, you're a great defense attorney. But you're gonna have to do the rest yourself. Great, just... As if I haven't done enough already! Hmm. The background leading up to this incident has been laid bare. There's just one question remaining, Mr. Wright. Who killed the victim? There's only two suspects right now. Maya Fey. But I'm sad to say you, Mr. Cadeau. Well, Trite, if you're the real deal, you can finish this thing once and for all. Show us beyond a shadow of a doubt that you can finish this on your own. No, Nick, please don't. Maya. I heard the whole thing uh, from my sister in the medical office. That's why I have to protect Mr. Godot. 
I can't do it. I can't testify against him. After all, he, he's the man who put his life on the line to protect Mia. And me too. Maya, I know that. Nick! But even so, it doesn't absolve him of his crime. Please, Maya, testify. Miss Faye, your testimony, please. This is the final testimony. Don't bother trying to hide anything. Because I'll know. I want to hear the truth from your own lips. I understand. And I'm sure you're right. I'm ready now, Nick. All right, young lady. Tell us about the moments before you lost consciousness. What exactly happened at the time of the murder? Time of the murder! Let's get to it! Uh, just before it happened, I think I saw some red lights. Three of them. I thought I'd ask for help, but... Just then, I was splattered with blood. She wasn't dead, though, and she struck back at the enemy behind her. Suddenly, the red lights went out, and the whole area was dark. Just at that moment, uh, there was a horrible scream. Right after that, Dahlia collapsed, and I lost consciousness. Hmm. These red lights. I thought you said you don't remember seeing them. I'm sorry. I thought I saw them, but then they disappeared all of a sudden. Ha. Huh. Things break, Trite. Even the best of theories. Who was it that stabbed Misty Fay? It looks like he still can't prove it. Maya's telling the truth this time. I know it. The rest is up to me. I'm gonna press everything. Well then, Mr. Wright, proceed with your cross-examination. Time of the murder, let's do it, girl! You and me, we're gonna... Well, I, I, I guess neither of us can really feel happy about what's about to happen here. Alright, let's go. Light's shining in the dark. I don't think you could make a mistake about that. Yeah, you're right. I think I saw them, but I can't say for certain. And I can't tell you for sure that they were from Mr. Godot's mask, either. I don't get the feeling that she's covering for him anymore, but we're still gonna press harder. But just after that, you turned toward the lights and called for help. Isn't that because you thought the lights were coming from Mr. Godot's mask? Yeah, I guess so. Maybe that's what I was thinking at the time, but I can't remember after all. There was a person I couldn't identify in front of me. Maya's life was in terrible danger at the time. There's no way she can remember the details of the scene perfectly. <laughs> Steven, yeah. Your guys' plan to prevent all this from happening, it was pretty far from stellar. Alright, then let's go on to the testimony. What did you do when you saw the red lights? I thought I asked for help, and she was splattered with blood. That blood. Was it Dahlia Hawthorne's blood? I think so, probably, just at that moment. I heard a soft scream. It seemed to be close by. It was a woman's voice. Ah, so that is when the killer stabbed the victim from behind with the murder weapon. Is that right? Without a doubt, Maya was in the middle of a really dangerous situation. Anyway, the victim was stabbed by the murder weapon. What happened after that? She wasn't dead, though, uh, and she was struck back- and she struck back at her enemy. At the enemy. Yeah, yeah. Struck back? How do you know that? Well, you're right. I didn't see it exactly, but I could tell by the sound of their breathing and the movement. And also, the smell of blood. Ah, you have witnessed more horror than any young lady should ever have to in one's life. So then, what did you do at that point? I couldn't move. I could just barely make out their shadows moving in the dark, but... I had no idea what to do! Could you still see the red lights you mentioned earlier? Yes, I think so. But... Suddenly, they went out and the whole area was dark. They went out? Yeah, suddenly I couldn't see them at all. Hmm, what could it mean? If the red lights were coming from Godot's mask, and they went out right in the middle of a fight, maybe the mask was damaged? Or maybe it was knocked off? Or maybe the batteries ran out, right, Trait? Oh, or maybe those little pinhead-looking lights just stopped working. 
So many possibilities! What could have really happened? Just at that moment, there was a horrible scream. What do you mean by just at that moment? Do you mean the moment when the red lights went out? Yeah, that's right. The scream that you heard then, was it Dahlia Hawthorne? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it was a man's voice. What? He was stabbed, my boy. I, I think, because there was the blood on the knife that was not the victim's. So then that scream that came from the killer. That's got to be it. And Dahlia Hawthorne, she kept saying, I stabbed Maya, I stabbed Maya. Right in her testimony earlier? She thought she stabbed Maya. She, she did stab someone. I think Dahlia Hawthorne stabbed uh, Godot. It's got to be it. Hmm. I think Dahlia Hawthorne must have taken the blade and attacked the killer with it. And then the killer lets out a scream of pain, huh? Whoops. After that, the killer stole the blade back and delivered the final blow, I guess. Well, Mr. Wright, seems to make sense to me. Sounds like a reasonable deduction, but I still kind of wonder. There's a contradiction. I'm sorry to say this, but that interpretation would create an enormous contradiction. Ah, oh, that makes sense. After all, my deductions are almost certainly never correct. <laughs> and in the final moments, we got some clarity on the judge. Remember the testimony she just gave, before the killer let out a scream. Maya said that she had already been splattered by the victim's blood. In other words, the blade in the staff had already been plunged into the victim. Oh, is that right? She couldn't have struck back with the sword that was already stuck in her body. The weapon that caused the killer to let out a scream must have been something other than the staff, and I know what it was. If you're so sure about that, then why don't you keep us waiting any longer, Trite? There's only one thing I can think of that could have been used as the weapon here. Dahlia Hawthorne had already been stabbed in the back by the staff. What could she have used to strike back at the killer? Where is my knife? Found stuck in a pine tree in the inner temple garden, the blood doesn't match the victims. Naturally, the dagger the killer brought to the scene of the crime... Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. This dagger was found at the crime scene, stuck into a pine tree. Yeah, the detective found it this morning and brought it to me. Dahlia Hawthorne struck at the killer with this. And she managed to wound him as well. Just because he let out a scream doesn't mean that he was wounded. For all we know, the blood on the dagger could have been from the victim. Oh, Godot, you weak-ass prosecutor! No, that's simply not correct! Have you forgotten that the blood has already been tested? Were you not doing your job? Were you not paying attention to the judge? Since we learned it wasn't the victim's blood, it must be the killer's blood. The killer must have a wound somewhere on his body. Oh, so you're saying the blood on this dagger belongs to the killer? Exactly. A DNA analysis of the blood would prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And yes, Mr. Godot, it would prove that it is your blood. Oh no! Oh god, I don't know what to feel. Nice theory, Trite. Order! Is this the end? Have I done it? Even he won't be able to change the results of a scientific test. Yay for science! Ha. Huh. Let me ask you something, Shrite. Let's just say that it turns out that I was the killer. Do you really think I would be stupid enough to leave evidence like that? What? Just think for a second. This dagger was found this morning by a detective and then brought to me. There was already blood on it, correct? But even so, I was the one who brought this dagger here to the courtroom. Yes, what does that prove? I don't know, that you wanted to get caught, that you felt guilty? Because, you know, you killed a fae? If I really were the killer, I could have washed the blade off and then planted another person's blood on it. Well, that's... it can't be. In any case, there's one thing I can guarantee, Trite. That blood doesn't belong to me. Not a chance. What?! In any event, it seems to be established that the killer was wounded. 
All right, then witness. Continue your testimony. Oh. Wait a minute. What's the problem? Um, it sounds like there's a fire truck outside. <laughs> um, I know I probably shouldn't say this, but there's a big contradiction in Nick's explanation. What? Maya? This dagger. You said that it wounded the killer. That's right. But, but, if Mr. Godot had really been cut with the dagger, his clothes should be bloody, or have a rib in them, right? G girl, it's been like, it's been days. He, he, he could have changed his clothes. <laughs> um, Maya, sweetheart. Maybe he just, uh, changed his clothes. <laughs> That'd solve that contradiction pretty easily. What are you talking about? It's not that simple at all. Remember back to the day of the murder? Everyone that was on the inner temple side got trapped there. Oh, that's right. Once the bridge was fixed and the police headed for the inner temple, Mr. Godot was already there waiting for them. Maybe he got, uh, sliced and diced under his mask. The mask fell off. He never had a chance to change his clothes. Here we're gonna see Godot shirtless. Uh, if only. Order in the court! What the witness says is true. Well, maybe he brought a change of clothes with him. Uh, well, no one could have predicted the lightning strike that shut down the bridge. Why would anyone have brought a change of clothes? Huh, did the judge just take smart pills or something? Where, where, where's this coming from, sir? Well, then maybe the killer took off his clothes before he committed the murder. Oh my god. A naked Godot committing the murder? Something to think about. That way he wouldn't get any blood on them. It's impossible, Trite. You know how cold it gets up there late at night. Yeah, without wearing a dress shirt and a dress vest, that's the thing that's really gonna keep you, uh, warm. <laughs> After a few minutes with no clothes on, you'd be frozen solid. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. So that's all you got? I knew you weren't tough enough to finish this. Right now, if Mia Faye were here, if Mia Faye were here, she would have closed the book on this case already. If Mia Faye were here... Oh my god, Maxwell. BRB, gotta go look up some fan art! <laughs> so come on, Shrite, can you do it or not? How about it, Mr. Wright? You've accused Mr. Godot of being the killer, but you can't prove it. You got even one piece of evidence. I think it might be under the mask. The question isn't whether I can prove it or not. The fact is, I have to prove it. It's the only choice I have. I was taught that it's one of the rules of being a lawyer. I can prove it. I'm going to bring your magnificent vengeance to fruition, just as you want it. Oh my god, oh my god. Huh, <laughs> that's good. A fighter till the bitter end, Trite. This music though! Oh! 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 Oh my god, it's powerful! Because there's just one piece of evidence that can prove your point. Why don't we go for the unlimited penalty? Whoa! Oh my god, whoa, 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 whoa. Are you trying to pressure me, Mr. Godot? Yeah, and it's working. Let's do a quick save of confidence. <laughs> Yikes! Because it doesn't matter to me. I've got the one piece of evidence I need. Give me a break. You've got nothing, Trite. So what do I do at a time like this? It's simple. I've got to think outside the box and approach this from a different angle. Alright then, Mr. Wright, let's hear what you've got. There's one thing I've demonstrated in the previous cross-examination. The killer was wounded. That was proven by the blood on the dagger. But we've decided it was impossible for him to, for him to have hidden such a wound. If he had been cut by a dagger, there should have been a blood stain on his clothes. There's one place, one place the killer could have hidden his wound. What did you say? Hidden? Under the mask. That's it. My last stand. I need to think about this from a different angle. I don't need to think about why there were no blood stains on his clothing. I need to show how he hid the wound. It's the end of the line. Final stop, Trite. Let's hear what you got. Where's the location where you say the killer hid his wound? Oh my god, do I have evidence for it though? Wait, what? I... <laughs> Sketch, crime photo, tracks photo, autopsy report, victim staff, sheet, 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 top, irises, hood, photo of Elise, as a gear attempt map, occult, magatama. 
do, do I just present his profile and be like, hey, I think it's under your mask? That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's like his mask fell off. He was stabbed or he was like sliced across the face. And that's why he wouldn't have had anything on his clothes. And I don't think there's any evidence that I have that would possibly be able to show something like that. So I think it has to be a profile. Let's just throw it at him. And if it's wrong, I did a save of confidence. I don't know what you're talking about. And frankly, I don't need to know. What I do know is that you'll never be half the lawyer she was. Isn't that right, Shrite? Oh! What, what was that just now? Mia? Can't be. You're living on through him? Even as we speak, you're still hiding the wound. <gasps> oh! Oh my god! Oh, that's a screen cap moment! It's beneath your mask! And during the fight, the red lights given off by the killer suddenly disappeared. Seconds later, the killer let out a scream. That's right, your mask went flying off your face. Mr. Godot, would you mind removing your mask for this court? If you have a dagger wound under there somewhere, then I'd say this whole case is solved. Oh my- Whoa! Right, well, you, you don't need to explode, my guy. <laughs> are, are we gonna see his face? Uh, Godot face reveal post-poisoning? Phoenix is a spirit channeler now. Nope, still, still got the mask. Just now, I saw her spirit in you. I never liked you. Six years ago, you helped the woman who put me to sleep by hiding her bottle of poison. And then, while I was sleeping, you let Mia die. But you didn't care. You just kept on living your pathetic, happy-go-lucky life. You even had the nerve to follow in her footsteps as a lawyer. I could never forgive you. That's what I thought. Mr. Gateau? But I was wrong about you. I knew it from the very beginning. The truth is, the only person I could never find it in my heart to forgive was myself. Was me. Yourself? I was the one that failed to protect Mia. Me and no one else. I tried to avert my eyes from the truth, to escape from the harshness of reality. I just couldn't face Mia's death head on, so I ran. I hid behind a mask, I threw away my true name. Couldn't even deal with being a defense attorney anymore, so I quit. But you saved Maya. That was my plan. Up until just now, anyway. What do you mean? Are you listening, Maya? But I really wanted to save you. There's one person I should have gone and talked to right away. And who would that be? Girl, it would have been me, okay? Your bestie. Are you talking about Nick? But I didn't do it. I tried to get to the help of I tried to get the help of Iris and your mother. I closed my eyes to the most important man involved. Do you know why? The real reason? No, why? I suppose I wasn't really interested in saving you at all. Huh? I think I was just trying to salvage what's left of my own broken soul. Just trying to make up for the fact that I couldn't save Mia. Nothing more. Hey. That's why I let you walk right into a situation that I knew was dangerous. Yeah, you did. Forgive me. You're wrong. You did put your life on the line to save Maya. Was it really for Maya's sake? Even I'm not really sure. What do you mean by that? That night in the darkness of the garden when I saw her silhouette. Wow, this photo, though. Part of me must have known the truth. The truth that it wasn't really Dahlia Hawthorne standing there in front of me. It could have been Misty Fay. Could have even been the little girl. Yeah, it really could have been the little girl. But I still picked up the blade. It was like I was dreaming. I'm not sure exactly what was going on in my mind at that point. Was I really motivated by the pure desire to protect Maya Faye? 
Or was it something else? Was it my hatred for a woman who had stolen everything from me six years earlier? Could it have been simply a desire for revenge? And now, I don't know anything anymore. I did learn something today, however. I finally realized that I was the arrogant one. I was just chasing the illusion, a fantasy. A stupid fantasy of defeating you in a courtroom. You were the one who made me realize my folly. You never ran away from me as death. Instead, you picked up where she left off, as a true defender of the people. In that one moment, I understood everything. Mr. Godot! I think you already know this, but if you don't, my name is Diego Armando. I, I do. I, I said it to the court a while back, but that's fine. Mr. Armando, I believe in you. I know you were trying to save me. <gasps> oh my god, he's crying blood? Or is his wound opening up? I don't know. If he's crying, I guess by his own logic that means it's all over. Thanks. Your wound! It's bleeding! Did you forget already? In my world, the color red doesn't exist. These must be my tears. Tears? Ever since I woke up from my coma, I think I've been waiting for this very moment. Mr. Armando. You do well to remember this, Maya. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. God, this game! Fuck, dude. Whew. It's a lot. This time, it really is all over, isn't it? Defendant. Yes, Your Honor. Oh my god, I forgot Iris was the defendant. <laughs> Although you weren't directly involved in the murder, tampering with the body and the crime scene itself is a serious offense. I understand, Your Honor. Mr. Armando explained that to me very carefully. I knew the risk, and I willingly cooperated anyway. Very well. Before I hand down my verdict, is there anything you'd like to say? Well, there is one thing. I'd like to say something to Mr. Wright. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> I want to apologize to you. Apologize to me? For what? For the case five years ago, of course. Oh, I just remembered. Aren't you poisoned by your own lover? Well, not exactly, but something sort of like that. I ate glass. <laughs> Even now, five years later, I can hardly believe it. She was gonna do it. She was planning to kill me. It's not all that surprising, the two of you. You hardly knew each other. Huh? What do you mean? You and my sister. You only met twice. I beg your pardon? We only met twice? The first time you met was on that fateful day. The day she poisoned Mr. Armando in the cafeteria of this very courthouse. The next time you met her was eight months later. You met her again on the day that she stole your cold medicine. And Doug Swallow was killed. Um, no, that can't be true. I mean, we, we had a whole relationship. We were... For the eight months in between... The woman that you thought was Dahlia Hawthorne, it wasn't actually my sister. It wasn't Dahlia? I hope one day you can forgive me, Feeny. Oh my god, when she was in the detention center and she was talking to Edward and she was like, 
um, I know Mr. Wright, but he has no idea who I am. She was the one who dated us for the eight months. I mean, that's dark. It's a little bit twisted. But, I mean, does she actually like us? I mean, look at that blush. You, you, you mean, wait, what? What? That's right. I lied to you for eight months. What is this game, dude? But why? Why would you do such a thing? Ever since she gave you the bottle that day, my sister was trying to get it back as soon as she possibly could. Because of the police investigation and their surveillance, she couldn't really move about freely. So that's why you... My sister from the beginning, she was prepared to do the worst. Prepared for the worst. Great, that's, that's, that's delightful to know. She thought that you might somehow discover the truth, and that's why she was ready to deal with you at a moment's notice. So she was ready to kill me, wasn't she? She already had so much to answer for, I didn't want any more sins on her soul. I begged her not to do it, and she agreed to give me a chance. So that's why you came to me. You came to get the bottle pendant back from me in her place. And in the first game, while they were dating, in the testimony, he said, Phoenix, like, little twin, he's like, Yeah, she always says the same thing to me every time. Can I please have the charm back now? And it's funny because Iris, apparently, in retrospect, if that was Iris, she used the word please, which is probably not a very Dahlia thing to do. But... I couldn't get you to give it back. You were so hellbent on showing it to everybody you know and calling it a symbol of our love. I failed at something even as simple as that. Eight months passed and I still couldn't get it back from you. And then finally, my sister wouldn't wait any longer. She didn't consult me about her plans for you that day. It was the first time that it ever happened. That was a bit strange, wasn't it? Up until that day, you two were partners in crime, and she would confer with you. I think she must have noticed. Noticed what? My feelings for you. It, if I had found out she was planning to kill you, I would have done whatever was necessary to stop her. This girl, this girl, this girl might be a little bit sick and twisted, but like... In a way that's so much more of a turn on. Even if it meant her life. Oh my god! <laughs> Alright, straight up! Yeah, um, I would have definitely killed that bitch for you, Phoenix. Okay. What? Iris! After spending those eight months by your side, my feelings toward you, they changed. I have something to say to you, too. Uh, yes? You really are the person I always thought you were. Even after Dahlia Hawthorne was found guilty, I still believed in you. Well, when did this turn into a love story? Thank you. <laughs> Between heaven and hell. How... romantic? <laughs> How many cups of darkness have I drank over the years, even I don't know. I'll tell you though, right now, this one here is the greatest cup I think I've ever had. Don't you think so, Phoenix Wright? That's my name- OH MY GOD, I'M DRINKING COFFEE! Yeah, I think you're right. The purpose of this trial was to rule on the murder of the victim Elise Donum. At some point, I expect you will be tried for your role as an accomplice in this case. I understand, Your Honor. Very well, on the charge of murder, I hereby find the defendant. Not guilty. Wow, what an intense not guilty to get. Court is now adjourned. Well, well we did it. I guess it's time to uh, wrap up and close out. District Court, defendant lobby number one. So, I guess it's all over. The way everything ended, was justice really served? The man who risked his rice, uh, the man who risked his life to save Maya is being sent to prison. 
by my own hands. Of course justice was served. There she is. Oh, I'm glad we get a moment of closure with her. Oh, boys, it's the end of the game. Mia! I'm proud of you, Phoenix. Your defense was truly brilliant. But I couldn't save Mr. Armando, the man who cared so deeply for you. You're wrong, Phoenix. You did save Diego. You saved him in the only way possible. You mean, with the verdict? I think one day you'll understand, too. Phoenix, I want you to remember one thing. You were as good out there today as any defense attorney could ever hope to be. There's nothing more you can learn from me. Oh my god, we're graduating. Mia! You've accomplished something I wasn't able to. I owe you a great deal. Thank you. Mia! I'm sure we'll meet- Oh my god, I'm getting sappy. Fuck. <laughs> I'm sure we'll meet again someday, Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm sure we will. I've handled lots of cases, and I've seen lots of things. And along this journey, I've found myself asking just one question. What does it really mean to defend someone? Strategic placing of arms. I suppose today's case produced one possible answer. Oh, girl, how are you feeling? Nick! Maya? I guess it's just like my sis said. Mia, what did she say? That night, when I channeled Mia to get her advice on what to do, this is what she wrote back in my notebook. Don't worry. Phoenix will save everyone in the end. Oh, but... Come on, cut it out with that gloomy face. Can't you see? Me, sis, and I'm sure Iris, too. We owe you for everything you've done for us, Nick. Maya. How can you be so bright and chipper after everything that's happened? Girl, you're, you're surrounded by nonstop murder. Maybe it may... Maybe that's what happens. If, if you're surrounded by gloom and doom, you, like, just learn to be positive. <laughs> you were brutally attacked, and you even saw your own mother murdered. Oh my god. Franny! What's up? Still a softie as always, Phoenix Wright. Excellent. <clears throat> Excellent work, Wright. Huh, Mr. Edgeworth? When did you get back? Oh, that's right. I guess no one filled her in on that. Edgeworth and Francisco have actually been helping me. Helping you? Oh my god, what a feel-good ending. If these two hadn't been here on the first day of the trial... The defense wouldn't have gotten anywhere. Wow! But where were you, Nick? I heard he fell into a river and caught a nasty cold which forced him to sleep all day. Yes, he laid in bed shivering from his fever with Iris's hood pulled over his head. Oh, ouch. Talk about embarrassing, Nick. You definitely need more training. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. And you too, um... Francisco? I don't suppose... Oh, it's Lariath. I thought it was gonna be Dick. I don't suppose there's room for me in this group bug, is there? Oh, Larry. Oh my god, this music. What's with the, uh... Longer than usual face, and why does it sound like you just witnessed everyone get murdered? What? I realized something when I was reborn. I realized that Larry was never of any use to anyone. Not even me. Oh, that's not true, Larry. Right, Nick? Wait, what? You're asking me? Well, Nick, is it true? I got a place in this world, right? Um, well... Yeah, of course. James Corr, she has a whip? James, oh my god, James, are you not familiar with Franny? Ugh. If you ever want to go back to the back catalog of, uh... Phoenix Wright's uh, Ace Attorney 2, which is all on my channel. Oh, there is some quality content there. <laughs> I knew it! Everyone would be better off if I were gone for good. Yes, and Franny is known for her whip. I oh, yeah. Uh, those portraits you painted, they were really good. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? What? M me? Why are you making that face? Oh, huh, Edgy? Oh, well, um... Yes, indeed. I certainly can't say that they lack resemblance. Do you really mean it? What about you, Franny? Uh, did I draw you well, too? Oh my god, no! Oh! My beauty can't possibly be captured by a mere crayon. <laughs> mm. Nevertheless, I recognize the effort you put into it, and that's worth something. Oh, Franny, she's got a heart, too. So then you'll do it, like you promised. You're gonna model for my works. Oh! Don't get carried away. 
<laughs> I love her. Well, uh, how about that? Uh, I guess painting portraits is the only thing I'm good at. The painting of Pearl is pretty darn good too, if you ask me. Huh? Now that you mention it, I haven't seen her around. Pearls? Where could she have gone? Phoenix, you were just talking to her, as Mia. Normally she would have made a beeline for Maya. Oh, I'll go look for her. I'll be right back. Hey, Pearly! Right. You seem to be uncharacteristically puzzled. I suspect you are wondering how Maya can be so cheerful despite all that has happened. Yeah... To be honest, I can't understand it either. Francisca. That's right. She lost her father fairly recently as well. I think I understand how she feels. Maya is a much wiser person than she appears. And I think she realizes something. Now is exactly the time when she needs to be as strong as she can. What do you mean by now is exactly the time? Maya wasn't the only one that was badly wounded by this incident. In fact, there was someone that was hurt far more deeply than she. I believe it's for that person that Maya is trying her best to not cry. Someone who was hurt more deeply than Maya? Edward, I think I'm starting to understand too. No! Oh! Well then tell me, Phoenix, right? Who is Maya Faye being strong for? Girl, it's Burly! She just realized that she tried to kill the person she loves in this world the most. <laughs> Pearl Faye? And she learned that her mom is an even bigger piece of shit than she might have realized in game two. Poor kid. After all, the reason that she worked so hard to follow the instructions was because she loved and believed in her mother Morgan. It's for the good of the Faye clan. I'm sure she believed every last word. She thought she was doing it for Maya. That's why she was so happy. Ah, oh, these two love each other. It shows how truly devoted she is to Maya. Her nose is running. It's a cruel irony that it was her exuberance that led to this tragedy. Maya Faye's mother was killed and Maya herself was put into the deepest peril imaginable. And that's exactly why Maya's putting on a brave face. She's doing it for pearls. Until she can see her smile again. Oh, hey, bud! So this is where y'all been. Wow, oh, looks like we got a great- Oh, jeez, ouch, Franny. What was that for, sir? Sorry about that, Scruffy. My whip just seems to have a mind of its own for you. Ooh. What's up, Detective Gumshoe? Oh, you know, this and that. Anyway, uh, congrats on your win, pal. Let's go out tonight. Dinner's on me. The salary's just, you know, sort of gone down a teeny weeny bit, but uh, it's all right, pal. I made reservations at a first-class French restaurant tonight. Oh, jeez. Ah! Pretty good work, Scuffy. That whip was your reward. Um... Um, Detective Gumshoe, you said a first-class French restaurant. You don't mean... Trebian, of course! Where else? Oh, jeez, we're doomed. Come on, let's go, everyone. Oh, I can't keep Maggie waiting, pal. <gasps> Dick's got a girl. Ah, uh, you, crybaby. You're invited, too. Oh, forget about me. Pearl and I will be at the loser Shack, eating potatoes. You know, Maya is taking an awfully long time to get back. She's still out looking for pearls. Oh, there she is. Oh, Maya. What's wrong? Nick, what do I do? Pearly, I can't find her anywhere. Huh? Oh, I'll bet she just went back home, that's all. I thought so too, so I called the village, but no one's heard from her. This hasn't ever happened before. As I figured, she has been badly hurt by this incident. She feels responsible for the tragedy that has befallen you, Maya. But none of this was her fault. What do I do? Detective Gumshoe. Yeah, what is it, pal? Could you guys go on ahead? But, uh, what about you? Maya and I, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll join you guys once we find pearls. Nick? Don't worry about us. You have fun, Dick. We might be a little late, but we're definitely going to be there. We have a lot of celebrating to do tonight, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. Oh, yeah, but you're Oh, jeez! Very well, Phoenix Wright. We'll go on ahead. Don't keep us waiting, Wright. 
We won't. But where should we look? Where could Pearly have gone? Let's go, Maya. There's only one place I can think of that Pearls might have gone to. Somewhere to repent for her sins. <laughs> February 10th, Azakura Temple, main gate. Azakura Temple? For Pearls, I bet this is a very important place. After all, it's where this whole incident started. Oh, my, what's this? You're all back again so soon. Ha ha ho ho. Sister Bikini? I thought we'd be eating mashed potatoes tonight. So she's here. Pearls is here? She's in the training hall. Why don't you hurry along and go see her? Um, okay. Um, Pearlie's not here. Ah! Maya, the hanging scroll. Oh, she cleaned it. Someone cleaned it off. It's gotta be Pearls. Ah! Mystic Maya! Pearly? Why... Why did you just leave like that? Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! Oh, children. I guess we gotta cheer her up, too. I swear... I swear I would never uh, trouble the two of you ever again because it's all my fault. <laughs> Mystic Maya's mom. That's why you came here. It's the least I could do to pray for your happiness. Oh, you don't have to do that, Pearly. It wasn't your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. You're just a little bit stupid is all. Of course, I'm sad that my mom is gone, but how do I say this? I... I'm still happy. You, you don't have to lie just to make me feel better. No, really. It's true. The only reason I'm still here is all, uh, at all is thanks to everyone who was there for me. Butchered that a little bit. My sis, my mom, Mr. Armando, Nick, and you. Even if one of you weren't there, I'm sure I wouldn't be alive right now. That's why I have to be strong. For all the people that were there for me when I needed them. It's very, very sweet. If I'm being a thousand percent factual, if Pearls wasn't here, none of this would have happened. It's not her fault. She was tricked, but she was the vessel that Morgan was able to use to make all of this happen. So, like, not only did she have no effect, but she was, like, actually quite detrimental to the entire situation. Through no fault of her own. It's, it's kind of like, you know, when a hurricane rips through a, a, a community. Is it the hurricane's fault? Not really. It's not like it's this evil thing that was planned. It's just, it's just nature. It just sort of happened. <laughs> Don't ask me to cheer up children. That's all I can really do. Mr. Maya... I'm impressed. You truly are the daughter of Mystic Misty. Sis Sister Bikini. Your mother, Mystic Misty. She was a strong woman indeed. I want to tell you what she said to me that night. After dishonoring the good name of Karain, I don't have the right to face my daughter. Really, Misty? You couldn't have, like, said hi to her and given her a warning? But still... Maya is always in my thoughts. It's true. She'll always be with me until the day I die. Your spirit was with her. That's why your mother was so strong. Even in the end, I'm sure she had no regrets. She'll always be with me until the day I die, huh? There's a rule or something all masters are to follow, isn't there? To never take the charm off until the day you die? That's the master's talisman! The thing that Misty kept by her heart and would never take off. It wasn't the container that was important. Rather, it was the contents. The that's... A photo? Oh. Mother. It's only natural for living creatures to fight to protect their own lives. But what makes us human is that we fight for others. But who do you fight for? How hard must you fight? That's the true measure of what human life is worth. We defense attorneys are warriors who are constantly challenged by that question. <gasps> oh my god, it's me and Maya's kids and they broke the face! Oh my god, that- <laughs> Poor Mystic Ami, the disrespect she's received by the Fae Clan. Even when the battle is over, 
and the bonds that connect us are severed. We always return, time and time again. Mia, Maya, Pearls, Mr. Armando, and Maya's mother too. I learned that from all of them. That's adorable. Well, shall we get going? We got everyone waiting on us. Ah! This is a day to remember. A day when a lot of things were finally put to rest. I think we should celebrate what we've overcome today. But... I still can't. Oh, go on, sweetie. You can come back for training anytime. Um, okay. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna make a brand new start too. Sister Bikini, I'll be back for more training, I promise. I know, and I won't go easy on you just because you're the future master. I'll make sure to prepare reservations for the three of you when you come back. Ha ha ho ho! Uh, I'm sorry, three of us? Alright, we're gonna have a great feast today, Pearly. You know why? Because training is a battle of endurance. Okay, Mystic Maya. I'll eat lots and lots of food tonight. Um, you know, there's one thing I don't get, and I probably don't want to, but, uh... What is it, Nick? Reservations for training is fine and all, but... Why for three? Come on, what do you think? You're one of us, Nick. Next time you can train right alongside us. Oh, jeez. Oh, great. Yeah, I can't wait for that. I'll be waiting for you. Sister Bikini will take special care of you. Ma'am, I'm a homosexual man. Dahlia Hawthorne kind of turned me off of women. Huh? It'll be great, Nick. But we're gonna do the special course, naturally. Wait, what? That's a great idea! After all, Mr. Nick, you'd do anything for Mystic Maya, wouldn't you? Even walk on hot coals, right? More like a hot burning bridge. We'll have a nice big meal right before we come next time, right, Nick? You know... I was wondering if I can say just one little thing. Oh, here it is. Guys, it's the line. Sure, of course you can. Oh, I love this part. I can't wait to hear it. I'm getting goosebumps, too. Well, here goes nothing. Objection! Objection! <laughs> oh, my God. And that is a wrap. We've beaten the entire trilogy of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. What an amazing game. Oh, I forgot. I have to read dialogue. I'll really have to work extra hard now. Master of Crane and the office manager of Wright and Company Law Offices. And I have to be a good big sister to Pearly and to Nick, too. Well, as long as I'm not locked up or captured or something like that. It'll probably happen a couple of times. <laughs> good to know. All right, so Maya, she's got things going for us. Oh, guys, thank you so much for being here on this journey. There's so many of you. It's been such a hoot. So it's true! Mr. Nick really is Mystic Maya's special someone! He went through with the special course all the way to the end! Actually, I heard there's a legendary extra special super special course here too! I think I'll surprise the two of them by making them a secret reservation! Wow, oh my god, he did it. Can we have fan art of him, Nick, doing the special course? I want to see my man Nick naked under a freezing waterfall. Oh my god, he got a new coat! Oh, Maggie bought me a brand new coat as a present, pal. I feel ten years younger. I'll never take it off. Yes, but uh, somehow you don't seem the same. I guess a dirty, shabby old overcoat is much more detective-like, sir. Oh, uh, don't worry about it. In the name of love, a man will soil himself silly. Oh, wow. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, dude, I can't believe we're done. Uh, Mr. Wright... I once again am in your debt. Thanks to you, the treasures of the crane exhibit was a great success. I even got to see Miss Von Karma, who I hadn't seen for almost a year. She taught me how to use a whip and said that I must show you what I've learned. Oh my god, the two of them are friends! Like, real friends now, not just like manipulative friends. That's actually a really adorable two. Everyone's getting a happy ending! Oh. Uh, Desi and I started a company called Master Mask and Channeling. We're dedicated to stopping the evil plans of all the criminals in the sea. Our motto is cut it out, please! <laughs> Pretty cute, huh? Well, uh, we also have plans to tell the criminals this kind of stuff. I wonder if that's okay. You know, sometimes I think we're the worst criminals, you know? Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Rule 34 of the internet, it's coming. The amount of voices through this whole journey. I wanted to show my appreciation to Mr. Wright for exterminating Don Tigre. 
So I lent him $500,000 and a tea set. Oh my Christ! A special thick tea, one I mixed with <laughs> my own two hands. I bet he's drinking it now. Win through compromise. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so Phoenix uh, just got half a million dollars. That's pretty fucking dope. Oh Jesus. I'm just old and in the way. A wrinkly old grumpy clown. Nosed ways to fetch. At least that's what I thought. But uh, my grandkids said they had a birthday party for me the other day. <laughs> Talk about embarrassing. 69 years old and I cried like a baby with a dirty diaper. These whippersnappers make me feel so good inside. <laughs> uh, and all the voices are all here at once. As usual, we have hired a new programmer to replace Glenn Elg. I do hope everyone will get along. His name is Adam Mata. As soon as I heard his name, I knew our brain circuits would align perfectly. Adam Mata, what's the pun there? Adam Mata, Adam Mata, Adam Mata, Adam Maybe? It's another, it's a palindrome. God damn it. I always forget about the palindromes. Oh my, my, more reporters. Since the murder, we've made so much money, I hardly know what to do. I think the magazines like us because I provide such a nice visual. Especially in spring. I can hardly wait for Iris to come back. Ha ha ho ho. Mm. I mean mob money, but still money. <laughs> oh. Jeez, so many great characters. You've turned into such a respectable man, Feeny. It was so sweet of you and everyone else to come and visit me here the other day. Of course I was happy you constantly had your eyes on me, but... I felt kind of bad when the little one slapped you and gave you a nosebleed. Oh my god. <laughs> The love triangle that's gonna be in soon. Voice, George Smith. You're welcome. Objection! Oh my god, who are the voices? Phoenix Wright, Ben Judd. Thank you, Ben Judd. I loved your objection. Listen to all of them. This is important. Oh, yes. Sean King, beautiful voice, sexy man. Give me that Franny, please. Objection! Oh, no, Mia, okay. Yes, Christina Catano. Thank you, Christina. Oh. Got, got to appreciate these voices. Objection! Ooh. Deep. James Wilson. Your character was a bit of a, mis uh, uh, a sexist pig, but Objection. you know what? I'm here for it. Oh! Franny! Janet Sue. Is that how you say that? Janet! I love that. Objection. Janet. Oh! Objection! <laughs> David Chrysler, these are the actual real talents, the people who would be mortified that I voiced their characters. Oh my god. What's this? I'm back from a long and tiring vacation and no one is here to greet me? I guess while I was gone, my little whippersnapper buddy quit and now I've got no one. And what kind of lovely, crazy security room is this supposed to be anyway? What's with all the flashing lights and switches? I feel like some sort of space alien. And now what am I going to do with all these macadamia nuts I brought back from everyone? If I bring them over to Edgy Poo, I know exactly what he'd say. He'd say I really can't accept these. I'm afraid of something that's painful to the fragile heart. Oh, when will I ever find a gentleman who will treat me like a lady? Ta -ta -ta! Just when you thought that Wendy Oldbag wasn't going to be in your Phoenix Wright game, Wendy Oldbag shows up in your Phoenix Wright game. I finally found something to do, Nick! Franzi's whippity whip trip, it's gonna turn the art world on its head! Should have realized it sooner. Self-centered, lazy, antisocial. I'm an artist, dude. I'm really good <laughs> portrait artist. I'm not a loser. I'm just an artist. Shots fired. Um. She also did the localization on the Ace Attorney series, Janet. Well, that's what's. Oh my God, this picture of them. <gasps> oh, dude, look at how look at how beautiful Franny is. Oh my god, and then Mia, Godot, and Misty. Jeez. Yeah, the uh, voice actors, to my knowledge, they were the local random people from the localization team. Because, for at least for the American release, because they didn't have, like, professional voice actors. Huh. <sighs> Alright, is that it? Saving, are we done? We are done! 
Wow, that's such a wrap, you guys. All right, as always, if you've been here the whole time, you've supported the series, a like would be really greatly appreciated. This has been a fantastic journey. Likes do help out with the streams. You should subscribe if you want more content because even though we finished the trilogy, boys, there will be more Ace Attorney in the future. I know there's a lot of games. Tom Lee is already uh, in the chat pointing me in my next direction and um, I can confirm that that's what my next plan is. I don't think I'm jumping into it right away, but the next Ace Attorney I do plan to do is um, the crossover game on the 3DS. Professor Layton versus Ace Attorney. Um, I've been told, obviously no spoilers, but I've been told that um, timeline-wise in the game, it's best to play that from the Phoenix Wright angle. Because even though it was released way later than I think like when Apollo Justice takes place, in the timeline, the game, I guess, takes place before Apollo Justice, and Apollo Justice comes along later down the road. So I'm going to be playing these games kind of in, like, the timeline of, like, when they should be happening. I think that makes sense. Also, I have not played through the Professor Layton series, so this little crossover game should be a nice little introduction to, um, see this kind of puzzle gameplay mechanic that, uh, the Professor Layton franchise is known for. So that should be kind of cool, even if I don't totally understand all of the lore and depth of the Professor Layton characters that may or may not appear in the game. So, that's one that's on the back burner. It will be coming at some point. And again, I plan to play through all of the mainline Ace Attorney games, and then we can maybe talk about side series another day, another time, another place. As for what's going on immediately, I don't actually know. <laughs> I don't know which game is going to be on my burner right next. What I can tell you is that, um... I do think I'm going to take the next day or two off, because I did actually stream over the weekend, because I had Freddy over, and uh, we made the decision that we should stream together. So I didn't actually take a break this weekend, and uh, now that we're at, the, at a stopping point where we finished a game, I want to take a couple days to kind of recoup and get myself situated and in the zone to play another game. So there will not be a stream tomorrow, and I don't think... I, I might not stream Wednesday either, so tentatively... Uh, I plan to return on Thursday, and I hope that I will see some of you guys here for whatever we stream next. If you guys are just Ace Attorney people, I will see you when I do the next Ace Attorney game. If you guys are Mario people, maybe we'll be doing a Mario game. If you're me people and you just want to see me, I will see you on Thursday. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I hope you have a good rest of your night, and uh, that will be it from me. As always, if you have game suggestions, you can leave them in the comments of this video or any video, or you can send them through a DM. I am always taking suggestions, and uh, we will find something to do. All right. Toodles, boys!